Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. My name is Iqbal Naseem and I'm here to answer your top questions on Salah. So let's go. Okay, we've got three more to go. So let's have a look at number eight. Do you have any tips on how to wake up for Fajr? Right, a common question. Uh, something that many of us struggle with, especially in the summer, the days are long, the nights are short, it's difficult to wake up and feel fresh for our Fajr prayer when we are uh, just having four hours sleep, five hours sleep, for example. So, here are a few things to bear in mind. Number one, of course, to state the obvious, but it's something which we all oftentimes struggle with, is just getting to bed on time. Try to sleep as soon as you can after you finish your Isha prayer, especially in the summer when uh, Isha is late, then do your Isha prayer at the earliest time and get to bed quickly and plan for that in advance. Sometimes it takes us to really plan for that, make sure things are out of the way. So that's number one. Number two is that especially I want to mention in relation to screen time, meaning time on your mobile phone, time on your laptop, whatever it might be, that's something which even research has shown if we do right up, up until the point that we fall asleep will affect the quality of our sleep. So it's good to set, off, set a cutoff time in the evening after which you can withhold yourself. Actually, don't have your phone by your bedside, okay? Now, you might be thinking, you know, your whole world will collapse if that, you know, is the case, that you don't have your phone by your bedside. But seriously, don't have your phone by your bedside. Don't be on it all the way until you fall asleep. And then the first thing when you wake up as well, right? Keep it away, uh, perhaps out of the bedroom or elsewhere. Now, some of the prophetic practices before going to sleep will also help, especially because they bring us to a certain state of mind in which we are remembering our Lord and in which we are having this attitude that, you know, an, an awareness that our soul is going to be departing us whilst we sleep and then coming back to us, inshallah, if and when we wake up. And this is based on one of the prophetic supplications where the Prophet wasallam said that in your name, my Lord, do I place my body down and in your name do I rise it up and if you withhold my soul, then forgive it and if you uh, return it, then protect it then protect it just as you protect the souls of the righteous. Look at the state of mind of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, when someone sleeps with that state of mind and they say, for example, Bismika Allahumma amutu ahya, that in your name, Allah, do I die and I live, they're in a certain state of mind that is likely to allow them to wake up quicker. Why? Because you're conscious of Allah. Sleeping conscious of Allah, hopefully you'll wake up with that consciousness uh, too that will encourage you to get up quickly and to respond to your alarm. Speaking of the alarm, keep the alarm away from you. Don't put the alarm by your bedside because it's tempting to just switch it off, hit the snooze button and then go back to bed. But keep it away from you, ideally, depending on how things are at home, either near the door of the bedroom if your bathroom is outside or if you have like an ensuite kind of setup, then near the door to the bathroom within. Because then you've already made the distance in order to switch off the alarm, in order to then uh, get to the uh, bathroom. So the more steps that you can take away from your uh, bed to get to the alarm, the better, basically, because now you're more fully out. Of course, then your wudu and uh, refreshing yourself in that way will help. I actually oftentimes make wudu for fajr with cold water in order to just wake, revive myself and wake myself up. So a number of these things are uh, things that we can do, habits that we can have. Of course, ask Allah, ask Him for His assistance, ask Him for His help, have that determination, realize that this is such an important meeting that you don't want to miss. And if you do miss your Fajr occasionally, don't let that be a reason to miss the next one. Get back on track, be determined, put some of these things into practice, and inshallah, you're going to make it.